All right, welcome back again, guys. We are on the final steps of finishing up this rudder and getting it ready for paint. You can see that I have the fabric sealed with the thinned glue. And if I spin this around, you can see that on this side, I have one coat of this Ecofill primer. And this primer also is put on with a foam brush. I bought four of these the other day and I should have bought a bunch of them because each coat uses a new brush because you put on a coat, you let it dry, then you put on another coat and you just can't really clean these brushes. So I have one left. I'm gonna, going to do this side right now and I'm gonna have to go buy more foam brushes. Now here's what I don't like about this Ecofill. For some reason, I guess it's the design of the product. If you let this sit for more than about an hour, and I'm not exaggerating, all of the solids go down and come out of the liquid or fluid, whatever it is. So every single time you use this, you have all these clumps of solids on the bottom of the container and you have to really kind of scrape it up and uh, you know, mix it back up. I just put this other coat on last night. So even just having this sit overnight, it just, all the solids come out of it. You have to stir it up every single time you use it. Now I will say this is actually kind of fun to do. Because <laughs> it just completely changes the look of it. And you guys can read the Stewart Systems Manual. What you're doing is you're putting on three cross coats. So one cross coat is a north-south pass and an east-west pass. And you can spray this on or you can brush it on. I prefer to brush it because it puts it on thicker. <clears throat> And each coat gets sanded. So I kind of like having that thicker coat on there to sand, to kind of maybe fill any imperfections or anything like that. And I'm just going real light now and I'm trying to work out as many of those air bubbles as I can. And this is just the first of three coats. So this will go on a little bit thin, which is okay. This is just the sort of the base coat you could say. There's a little glob of something. Well guys, I have to admit I made a mistake because I was paying more attention to <laughs> that stupid camera. You're supposed to uh, strain this so you don't get any little clumps or anything in it. And that's what I've been doing. I just kind of forgot now. When I was dipping the brush into the can, I was like, something feels different. <laughs> and that's because I didn't strain it and use it out of a little bowl like I've been doing. So. <laughs> And that's okay, because if there was any little, you know, little chunks of something in there, this is only the first coat, so it gets, uh, let me move this camera back here. It gets sanded out anyway, but let's put this back here, and then we can continue on using this with the filtered uh, filler. And I always do the edges uh, after the brush is almost empty because if you do it with a full brush of glue, you'll get way, or not glue, but eco fill, filler, you'll get way too much on there and it'll really kind of tend to run. 
So all of the, all of the edges here I kind of do after I've, you know, spread it on. Like I said, this is kind of fun to do because it just, you know, it changes it from, from green to gray. All right, now it's all covered. Now I just make sure uh, I've completely got around the, the entire leading edge and trailing edge and there's no runs anywhere. Trailing edge looks good. Little spot I missed right there. And everything looks good around here. Well, that was easy. Now I do this the, the long and time consuming way. It would be nice if I could do both sides at once, if I made some sort of jig. But what I do is I do one side at a time because it's easier. So last night I did the bottom side I showed you and it's dry. So today I'll do this side and then I'll wait a couple hours and I'll flip it over and then I'll put the second coat on this side, wait a while, flip it over, put the second coat on this side. It just takes a couple days to do because you have to let it dry in between every coat. Um, but for me right now, that's easier than going and getting two by fours and making a jig and, which I have to do anyway, because when I paint this, I have to uh, be able to paint both sides at once. So, but I don't know, I'm just gonna tell I'm doing it. I'm doing it the hard way for now, and then when I'm ready to paint, then I'll put the time into making the jigs. So, now these brushes, after you use it once, they're, they're done, because this will dry in here, and then uh, you, know, you won't be able to use it again. So, these are 78 cents at Home Depot. So, plan on spending 10 bucks or so on foam brushes. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go back to the store now, and. I'll ride the motorcycle over to the Home Depot and get some more brushes. And then later today, I'll put another coat on there. Oh, this stuff is just a mess. It just gets everywhere. Well, you've seen from start to finish what's involved with covering an airplane with fabric. From prepping the frame, to putting the fabric on, to rib stitching, to putting on all the tapes, to sealing the fabric, to putting on the primer. The next step is to paint, obviously after I finish putting on all the coats of primer. Once this is done, I'll finish up the fuselage, I'll get the eco fill on there, and then everything will be ready for paint, and my goal is to have this entire airplane, minus the wings, so basically the tail pieces and the fuselage, painted by the end of summer. I'm really looking forward to that because once it's painted, I can obviously build up the back end, put all the stabilizers and elevators and rudders on the airplane, put the tail wheel on, put the main gear back on the airplane, and then I'll have what looks like a pits, sort of. I think the next step after that is I will strip and paint the, all, all the aluminum side pieces that go up front there on the fuselage. And then at that point, it's basically just firewall forward on the fuselage and then I could figure out what to do with the wings if I want to take the fabric off of those and recover those just to make them new again. And then uh, I need to figure out the engine so that I can either rebuild it or fix the oil leak or see what I want to do with that engine. So thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed these videos to see what's involved with covering an airplane. I'll see you again on the next video, which will be how I covered the fuselage.